Grinding away on the outside. Zoom on just the leader, but Bold Max just about got him. Zoom on and Bold Mac stride for stride. Zoom on lifting from Bold Mac. There's nothing in this. Zoom on just in front. Zoom on. Welcome to Bet Doctor behind the curtain. Look at how pro punters operate. I'm your host, Scoot. I'm joined in studio by Big Red, the New South Wales uh, cheer squad leader, John Walter. How are you, buddy? Have a good night last night at the at the game. <laughs> hey. What's happening? A little bit of a meltdown. I'm <laughs> <It's> all right. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> Every year I say I'm never going to go to that low joint Suncourt Stadium again. <laughs> Every year it sucks me back in. Anyway, we move on, move on. But something positive. Come on, positive show. Decoy oh, you're not positive the submarine. people around here. You're not the submarine that's called missing. I did tweet that, that I'd rather be in the submarine <laughs> than I took it down. I thought that was a bit harsh to the people in the submarine, but I was serious. I would rather have been in the submarine than where I was at the time. Oh, beautiful stuff. Any of the origin last night, DK or Nico? No, zero. No, nothing. No, no interest here. No, no, we had a good start here. Me and Nico have just, each of us just inhaled one of the, uh, as I say, the best toasted sandwich in Melbourne. So, um, and... And didn't have Borco coming down the stairs as I was about to take my first bite, cracking the whip to say, get upstairs and start the show. <laughs> that didn't happen today either. So we are. That's a positive start to the show, Nico. Yeah, we're up and about. Uh, late night watching Royal Ascot, but it's going to be a, a big week. I'm keen to see Artorius um, later in the week at Royal he's Ascot. Yeah, he's the he, one. He is the one for us. Yeah. Uh, cool and gutter. He's the hope. Bubble kind of burst there, but Artorius, looking at him just in the vision we've seen OMG, looks terrific. So hopefully he can bring it home. I haven't had a bet or seen a race at Royal Ascot. I've been tucked up. Except for last night, I had a late one cheering home Queensland, which is beautiful. But um, I see it was at Vorb and was a runaway winner. Now $11 at Top Sport to win the Melbourne Cup. What do you reckon, Walt? Can he take – oh, he's equal favourite with Goldman now. I'd, I'd still rather be on Goldman landed. Ooh, I don't know. Huh? It's just they're so all sure, around. It? it was like 30s or whatever it was after it won, <laughs> like $11 a bit tight. 30s, you'd like to be on it, but. Very short price. Well, if you watch the footage, the best part about that horse win was the early crow from the trainer. He yeah. called it home at the 300 and and it and it shit in. It didn't stop like a shot duck like it normally does in him and I go the early crow, but uh, that was good fun watching the that video of him uh, cheering at home. He couldn't even watch the race. He started walking away. Yeah. He was out the back. <laughs> it was, it's like BZ at Britannicus at the bull. That's what I thought of. <laughs> Have a look at this bloke. How many majors has he got? <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> Just watch the race, you imbecile. Jeez, it, was, it, was, it was good footage, that. <laughs> oh, see, see, he's not sweet, that bloke. Good uh, good news this week. Uh, Caulfield's back. Any early uh, news or mail about the track? Bowl, boys? Bowl, bowling green, I'm told. I've just heard it looks like a bowling green. Really? Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't heard anything. So I don't know. Then I saw what Jason Kerr, so he, he was sort of saying they do one track reno after the carnival and everything's over. So they have six to seven weeks off, and he said it's not really enough. And now they've had seven months off and given it two renos. So he's just, he says it's, it's bowling, bowling. He didn't say that, but I heard somebody's walked it said bowling green. So, mm. uh, yeah, no, it should be in magnificent order. And that inside track, looking at the vision too, it doesn't look as tight as everyone probably thought. Yeah, I'm, I'm I wonder if they made an right. adjustment there after the feedback and mm. that. So, be interesting to see how that turns up. Very exciting. And Jay Cars, she's only has to pass one more balance test and then she could be back race riding. So, it's all happening back in, back in well, Melbourne. It's amazing. Town. She's still, what, seven in front in the premiership. The Metro Premiership. Mm. She's seven in front of B Shin still. So uh, I think she's hoping to get back. Is she still claiming know? three or is she down to two? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Trying to keep it positive. Huh? Oh, eh? I was just checking because <laughs> you, you can ride 300 winners and you still get a claim. <laughs> uh, where were you? Where were you putting your hand up when we talked about it on the show? So is this bike never really heard of the winners? Is he really claiming three? Is that right? Didn't hear you say that, Walt. Didn't see you say that. What, once he's a bike, in Australia, where did you say? I'll worry about him. Where did you say if a bloke rides 100 how could he possibly claim three kilos? You just tuned in and said, oh, yeah, we're a moving yeah, whatever. Never <laughs> now heard you want to walk up. Now you want to walk up. Never heard <laughs> of him. Fucking late Sarah Sandra Sully with the late news. Yeah. Mate, when he comes to Australia to race, I'll take notice of him. Mate, blind Freddie Fitler could have bloody had him at two, the right claim. Exactly. What's going exactly. on Exactly. The RV? Mexicans, they're down there worried about their chihuahuas and their freaking burritos. <laughs> They've got no idea what's going on. Well, the, the market knew. The market knew. Yeah, the three kilo and, claim and at the end of the day. I think some of the owners and trainers may have known, but they're just, That's they're exactly, just that was smarter than my smarter thoughts than RVL. My thoughts exactly, Walt. Mm. Grab that bloke. Mm. And you don't have to give your extra two money back, Nico. So you're all sweet punters are a winner there. That was the biggest go of all for the last bloody two months or something extra too. Mm. So the punters finish in front for once, not having to give it back like a way in light 
on a race day or something like that. That was good. Remember that day, last one. And then Bucket's more waiting light at Wangaratta. Got on Twitter and apologised. Said, sorry, yeah, my fault. I take full responsibility. And the mate of mine, the mate of mine said, yeah, that's, thanks, Bucket. It's good. I still don't get my 7,000 back. Why you cost me? You know? At least with extra two. All the punters, oh, God knows how much was won on that day, but everyone in the world back did. So the putter's finished in front there. But no, it's a big mess. But anyway, that's what happens when mistakes are made. It can end up in a big mess. But mm. mate, mark, mark my words, they'll all be disqualified for sure. RV have to front up the bill. Like I know this show cause notices from the stewards to try and get the owners to mount a bit of a defence or get their two bobs worth. I think it's like a procedural issue. But it is. RV yeah. just have to mop up all the costs for this and, well, and fix it. Who runs their PR department? Genghis Khan or something <laughs> like What the hell? <laughs> they, just send, they just go, oh, well, we've let off a bomb. Let's send another one in. Yeah. Here he goes again. Here he goes again. If there's a steward's inquiry, they have to put out something about the steward's inquiry. All that was put out was steward's get Yes, there's a steward's inquiry commenced into this bloody thing, the miscommunication, uh, uh, RV, whatever. No, we're making no further comment. They didn't go out. PR department bullshit. What, who's, what PR? But Who they cares? need it. They need it. About what? The stewards have to put out a thing about a steward's inquiry. That was the only public thing that went out. If you upset 30 lots of owners or whatever it is, you know, we can't afford to lose them. So you've got to soften the blow. Ray Thomas needs to go down to Victoria and start writing for Ray it. Thomas needs to go anywhere. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> Just go. So it's two separate things. That they'll be disqualified by mm. the stewards and it'll be up to RV, whether, which we should say they should absorb the cost of the stuff up, but everyone should get paid, both sides. Horses who's got beat, horses who whatever. But uh, there's two separate things. So stewards disqualify them, then it's up to RV whether they want to Claw back the prize money or do something with that. So I'm tipping everyone will get paid. But then John Leake's John Leake's still blowing, saying, "Oh, even if they take the what about my mare that loses the win, you know, off her CV and all this sort of crap." So ever no one's ever going to be happy with the whole thing. So don't you get another lick at it? Like you, you can just back your horse in a lower grade and then just so you've won twice. Like you've won a maiden twice, you won a benchmark seventy Might twice. Happen, Grouse. Might not happen mm. if you've got a if you've got a city mare that's now well it's now a city mare and it's maybe added depending on its breeding fifty to half a million depending on what its breeding is. You know, you might not get that back. So they've got a fair case. It's going to be a nightmare. Good luck with them. It's an absolute beauty. A little own gold <laughs> RV. Tell you what, uh, yeah, they haven't really contained the bushfire there. They've just sort of tipped more fuel on it. And I thought the uh, the steward uh, probably added more fuel as well. The, yeah, the common man didn't really get it. Today's show is going to be a beauty. Uh, Donny, Tuta Levita, got the uh, job done just, skin of his, um, yeah, whatever. But uh, chin, he's chin, had a big. Chin. Yes, he's chin, chin, chin. He's had a big one at Origin, I think. And uh, Golden Gun Johnny, Zoom on, rated to perfection. So uh, just a one and done job, uh, you, Walt. It's a ride. Yeah. Uh, Nico, you got uh, Caulfield. Rain's a bit iffy weather. Are you thinking uh, good four, soft five? Yes, soft yeah, track. Yeah, about. Hmm. Probably soft six, maybe, if we get all the rain. But um, I think it's a five at the moment. So probably if it misses, we'll probably stay in that <laughs> he, range. Jason Curry's he's used to dealing with the bomb and the stuff down here. He's in there. It's good, yeah, soft five. If we get that rain, it'll be soft six. Good chance we won't get any rain at all. It'll be a good four. Get your options over there. Would you know what's going to land, land down here? Just land in the middle. Land five. in the middle somewhere. Do it five. Speaking of Jason. What about Azza? Is Azza around? Azza? Knockbar? Knockbar? He's one of the hottest hey, what's punters he, what's in Australia. Tell you what, you know where he is? He's going to Fiji, F1J1. He's he looks like he's had the full body um, shaved down when he's got the he looks he's got aerodynamic. Right, Lady of Iron, the eye liner, impressive stuff. Mm. And uh, he's going to have a look at the Tatsiara. I forgot about that. Lady Jeez, he was lucky. That. My thing got – no, it got beat anyway, but my, my thing got scratched in that race the other day, unfortunately, Nico. So I swear what else? Ca ca he came into my territory and wanted to tip everyone the dollar fifty first start of the one trials by five links. <laughs> I'm pretty confined. And over it went. But my thing was a late scratching played up in the plate or something, so I can't really cloak having it sail past it in the straight or whatever. But anyway, we'll talk to – we'll see what he says Won't when he gets you. on. <laughs> I left it on the run. I left it off the run sheet, of but I knew, it. I knew someone someone would bring it up. Top Sport Steamers there, Jew. Uh, they can't do it on. Uh, hey, hang on, this is going. Has his tipped a fifteen to one winner, and DK's up in for the rent. <laughs> yeah, that sort of sounds like unbelievable. I don't even know what, what fifteen to one winner. What? Wait, I didn't even say. Did you tip a he only tipped in one race. <laughs> fifteen no, to one winner. No, that was a couple of weeks ago. And then he, Lady of Honor. What was it about? Lady of Honor yesterday. Fifteen dollars in or was something. Fifteen dollars. I think it was double figures. It wasn't it happened in Queensland? So DK doesn't take any, any notice of that. This is I a think Queensland you get paid double if you back a winner at Ipswich. So it was fifteen dollars. The other thing about Ipswich, what I said, there's no no under 18s there. And then someone said, Ipswich Cup is no place for kids. What's the go with the Ipswich Cup? Is it? Big, big, big time there, is it? Oh, I don't know. I think it's a, it used to be a pretty average part of the world, but I think it's sort of one of those 
they're building a billion houses out there and it's probably changing. It'll be but Brisbane soon. It'll just be a suburb yeah, of Brisbane. Just, yeah, I don't know. There's a growth I don't think it's corridor, bad. DK. You'd love I like, it the, like the Maui Cup or something like that. The single Maui's single mother capital of Victoria. <laughs> and, mate, Maui Cup. Oh, <laughs> mate, I remember going there when I was working for Boogies. It was unbelievable. It was feral. Was top. it? Remember the, remember the Greg Domasavich when the when the little kid ended up oh, that shit. and the pig's head ended up through the bloke's window and all. Like, then you had to go to Maui Cup when that was all happening and it was just feral, mate. Oh, we went to a, a, a kid. It, was, it must have been like a CHA, like a schoolboy's uh, golf tournament in Dayton in Victoria. And about four days before we leave, it comes on a current affair. The, the uh, highest rate of teen pregnancy in Australia, Dayton, Queen in Victoria, <laughs> they were all celebrating. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, I don't think one of them got one away, but yeah, anyway, go Dayton. <laughs> One of the best front lawns I've seen was the Kembla Grange Gong. I, I can't get that burn out of my brain. There was uh, was grab a granny that day at Kembla. Remember there was the hold up and they just kept showing the front lawn and there was just birds everywhere. DK, we might go on a field trip down there. <laughs> I'll meet you halfway. That's probably halfway a between bus, Gold back Coast in action and Grab a granny to a holy cow. <laughs> <Hey>? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get the spa uh, bath on the roof. Yeah, yeah the gong. Cup. Yeah. switch cup, eh? Mm. Uh, Bob is uh, is back on all uh, Group 1, so I got the Tatsiara, so that's the last swing for the year. Uh, I think we've got this week's show, maybe next week's show, Sunshine Coast, uh, feature day, and then we might take a break for a couple of weeks. So, uh, you know, a bit of a spell from us, and uh, we'll put the boys in the paddock for a couple of weeks in July uh, and stop getting the boys out of bed so early for these toasted sangers. I think uh, Azza is online, and apart from Walt's uh, golden gun, he's, he's sort of the form tipster, so... Thanks for joining us all the way from uh, Fiji. Jace, going well? How are you, boys? Oh, we're freezing. What's he What's he shaving down for Fiji I for? I am not freezing. I see DK's not freezing. It looks like he sounds like he's steaming up already down there. <laughs> Blow it up like a second mortgage. You have a listen to him. <laughs> Surely you've got a tit for tat to get that melon off the screen in front of me for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> a cap. You've you got, you got a cap. you got a cap there. Sorry, sorry <laughs> about... Uh, sorry about... Um, only tipping a ten dollar winner out of two two tips last week. DJ, I apologise. I'll lift the game. No, sorry, I completely missed that. Azar, I, uh, I, uh, yeah, no, well done, good, well played, mate. <laughs> the blinkers on, yes. <laughs> Sleep of the world. You mean, you mean catch uh, any uh, Royal Ascot, Azar, while you're on holiday? No, I haven't. It's uh, on a bit late. I haven't bothered with it. And uh, Cool and Gatter got smacked, didn't it? I don't know why they took it over there, to be honest. But um, yeah, no, I haven't watched it. I haven't bothered this year, but I'm. Uh, on holiday, I've floated with the missus. I'm doing the Euros and Royal Ascot double next year. Um, oh, beautiful. So I locked it in while I'm on holiday while she's in a good mood. So I'm away. Bang, booked it. Too smart. I um, forgot Buying about horses, that. When I was holidays. at the sales there a few weeks ago, one of the connections of uh, uh, Cannonball said, oh, what, what are our chances in? I said, oh, five billion to one. <laughs> and uh, he's like laughed. He's like, no, seriously, I'm like, five billion to one. <laughs> At least I feel justified now in upsetting probably one of the most powerful people in racing. Serious question. Do they get subsidised for that trip over there, Cannonball, or is it all pay your own way? You would hope so. Otherwise, you'd be sending whoever made the decision a, an interesting text message to say. <laughs> Britannicus has got more hope of winning the Nakiyama Grand Jump than Cannonball winning. Uh, and I will say yes with that. Yeah, yeah well, thank you. That's, you send a horse that's one that's positive thing. One fresh first up around a leader's track on a leader's day going... <laughs> Eight below to the furlong, sprinting up 200 metres to one of the hardest straight tracks in the world. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, whatever. He's very, at least he's up and about. He's starting to talk a bit. We've just got him out of that. I forgot out. that. I oh. forgot that I upset him. I just feel justified now. I probably, you know, it wasn't a good career move for me to upset these people. Never is, but, you know, whatever. Should have said, oh, even money chance, brother. Let's talk about uh, the Tats Tiara this Saturday. We'll get straight into it. It's going to be a long show, 1,400-metre race uh, for fillies and mares. Opal Ridge is a favourite at Top Sport 370. Ruthless Dame, 480. Chain of Lightning, $9. Foxy Frieda, $11. Looks a massive price, that. Shilo, uh, Shalo, $11. Comrade Rosa, Winnie Machine, $14. Electric Girl, $20. Uh, Palisapan is $20, new owners. Two horses that uh, Azza likes here are Ruthless Dame and uh, Chain of Lightning coming out of the Stradbroke. Back to Mares, you got uh Coming out of the Stradi here, Chain of Lightning was four wide on the speed the whole way um, with Linda on, just, you know, just going up and down the same spot as she sort of does when she's not leading. Um, Ruthless Dame's getting the suck up on the rail there. Um that sort of had no chance from the gate, but rifles home on the rail, flies home for about for fifty. Um, I think this is the form in this for this race. Um, 
I'm, I'm against Opal Ridge here. I think it's huge unders. Um, it was four wide on the speed last start, but they went nine lengths below to the 600. And I think, you know, when, you, when you're wide and you offer slower speed, it, it can flutter you. I think Opal Ridge, while it's had some dynamic wins, it's, if you look at the horses it's beaten, the Gravinas of this world, um, I, just, I just think it's got a lot to prove here. And I just think it's unders, so I want to bet around it. Um, Ruthless Dane's drawn a, a rubbish alley, um, so I think it'll drift in the market. But with Johnny Allen on wide, I actually don't mind that. He's, a, he's the guy you want for for a horse on a, on a wide barrier. And I just think Chain of Lightning here is going to get a lot softer run. I thought she was gone, then she ran an amazing fourth in that Sangster behind Ruthless Dane. And I think that that sixth in the Stratty was full of merit. Um, she draws um, nine here. She should come into about six. Um, so I think with a nice cosy running behind them, would have loved a bit of sting out, not going to get it, but I just thought of double figures. I wanted to spec those two. Um, I could even give Electric Girl a chance first up. Didn't love the Jaden Lloyd booking. Um, Shalo, new trainer, granted, um, he's a gun, Matty Hoisted, but I think it's a first up, better fresh horse, and can it repeat that run second up? Maybe it is a month between runs. Can't back them all. Going with Ruthless, Ruthless Damon, Chain of Lighting. Um, against the five. How much speed's going to be in this uh, race? As a Foxy Frida, eleven dollars seems like a massive price. If they go too quick, um, she'll be rattling home, won't she? I know she's got a bad gait. But... Look, I think it's a bit like a bit like the Stratty. It's it's a capacity feel, but there there isn't necessarily a dynamite leader. Um, surely Lady of Honor will will go forward from three on the seven day back up. Your vision will go forward from eight eight. Um, Electric Girl will will be prominent, I think, from four. Um, but not sort of ridiculously strong pace, but it should be enough in there for, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming an even speed in a group one, 1,400 meter um, capacity field. Any thoughts, Walt? Did no, you? I just think if Ruthless Dame gets any sort of luck, it'll be in the finish. It's the one I'd want to, I think it's the strongest horse, best best strongest horse, fastest strongest horse. I think Foxy, for, I, don't, I don't know what that race it won last start. I think it was just a putrid race, obviously a good horse. Keeps finding the line, but I think if they're coming together, I want to be on Ruthless Dame to outsprint Foxy Frieda. Kind of agree with Opal Ridge. They just keep putting old mate on, non non claiming apprentice. Don't think he did a lot wrong last start, to be honest, like to be taken off the horse or anything, but it just doesn't make sense to have him on the horse in the first place. Um, 1,400. It, it could suck, 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 get out, sprint and win and beat you for sure, but $3.50, not, not exciting. I think Ruthless Dame's the best horse in the race. But it's not a race on. It's an ugly race. It's an ugly race. No, most of us are thinking on the same lines. Nico or uh, Group One DK down there. No, I got nothing. Bit of a raffle, I thought. Yeah, yeah no, see, a great, cool chat. All right, stick, uh, with, stick with the man in the informed man. Has it? Has it? Oh, do you want to be his friend? <laughs> yeah, coattails. Your <laughs> <laughs> farm race eight is the uh, the Healy Stakes. Bit lackluster this field, I think. Uh, on past editions, Prince of Boom's a favourite, three seventy. Big Parade five fifty. King Cap a six. Cornico seven fifty. The Big Goodbye set a nine dollars. Rangers eleven dollars. Salatine nineteen. Contemptuous nineteen. Vespertine twenty one. There's two horses we're going to have a look at here. You missed out on the best named horse in Australia, there, Scoot. Did you just dodge over it, number four? Robin Tug. Yeah, um, Robin Tug. Robin Tug's twenty one dollars. He goes well. horse. <laughs> Mm, 20, DK sauce, $21. Nico, Nico sauce. Nico. <laughs> DK sauce, I would have thought. Uh, Emerald Kingdom, $26. Shout out to uh, our friends at MacBet, $26. And here's the replay. Oh, uh, Salatine's the horse uh, here. Salatine, um, this is the day. They, In the red. Uh, this is the Comrade Rosa race, Opal Ridge, yeah. Yep. Like, Sat OSL this day. They rode it a bit more forward than, than I wanted. Sat, sat outside your revision. Um, they did go pretty slow in this race, but I just, I just think this horse. It was up to thirteen hundred this day. Um, I just think it's a better twelve hundred meter horse. Um, run back and run on. It's a look. It, it doesn't win very often, but I just found this race. There's a lot of speed here. I find Prince of Boom, Emerald Kingdom, big parade from wide. Uh, um, I've got a few others on speed there. King Cap is going to go forward. I just think the pace is going to be really on. Um, it's going to Prince of Boom up in weight as well. I just sort of wanted to be against those faves. And just, I just didn't like the race. All the form entwines in, and I just sort of was trying to find something wide. Both these horses are 25 to 1, so I just thought Salatine, go back, hot speed. Um, it could be the one. 
it, its form ties in through, you know, all these similar sprint races, the Sunshine Coast 15 rounds race. Um, you know, it's it's always unlucky though to get back or lost. Just thought wide barrier, Sam Collett, go back, hot speed, might run on and run over the top of them. I just thought at twenty fives, I wanted to spec it. Um, and then the other one um, that I wanted to have a look at was um, the big horse Vespertine, just completely different form. It's on the rails here back. It was a complete barrier trials check just before the turn. Um, I think Geordie was on at this day. He just sort of sneaks up on the rails and gives it a run. It was it was four months off into this. Um, looks like this could have been a target second up. Um, she runs home well here along the fence. Um, as I said, it looked like a complete barrier trial to me. I'm um, just looking for the improvement second up here um, on the minimum as well. Again, she's about 25 to 1. Just thought um, one that was going to spec her at, at big odds just because I just didn't like the race generally. You know, if you back Quantico last start, it was off the map. Maybe follow up on it at close to ten bucks. Could get the sack run from five and, and finish over them. Um, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna go away from the faves again here and, and spec a couple of big odds. This looks an absolute nightmare race. I thought Rangers might be an okay price at sort of eleven dollars. They hammered it last start and uh, got it went close and fifty five and a half kilos looks a, a winning sort of weight for that horse. But um, oh, this is an absolute mess. I don't. I'm surprised that you picked this one. You even had a look or? Well, Big Parade's got about 10 on them, but it's 400 days off, 60 and a half, blinkers off, 1,200 metres first up off, two short trials. Yeah, it's it, This will test Joe Pride, I think. Like it, It's just got so much on them. It's a joke. Um, it's just a matter of whether he's got it fit enough for it's sort of maximum distance first up from a wide draw with weight. Like if, if, it, if Tim and Josh come across and control, which is not, anywhere near a certainty, but they've got a good knack of doing it from wide draws. Uh, you could definitely look back on it and go, oh, geez, it was a good bet, um, big parade. I think it'll get out. I think $5 is probably short considering they'll take it on for a number of reasons, all the reasons that are against why I could possibly like it. But um, I just think it's the best horse in the race by a stack. Like mm-hmm. it gets an Everest horse. The rest aren't, potentially. Wow. Next. No, oh, well, that's the boys in Melbourne if they see it the same way. Yeah, well, it's taking seat next. Yeah, next, next person. <laughs> Nico, DK. Nah, a bit of a bit of a, like I think Prince of Boom. His his best asset is when he finds the lead and sort of can control the race with a few other leaders in the race. If they take him on, well, it probably does set it up for something in behind him. But you know, sometimes you can look at those speed maps and think, oh, this horse is going to get taken on. And it works out completely different. He gets a PR and he just wins mm. again. He's absolutely fine. Like horse, a so. one horse race the other day. Yeah, wasn't it? Killed him. They did hand it to him. That's a, that's a, yeah. that's the thing. That's the race. If they if they hand it to Josh and Tim from the wide draws, it's a one race. If they don't, completely different race. There we go. All right, that's an easy one. All right, as I will let you um slip slip off back uh, beside the pool. Is there is there anything out wide you can upset DK with down in uh, Victoria Town in any of the maidens? Is any anything in the water? I don't want to upset the big fella. I don't think anyone else is allowed to bet in maidens or tip in maidens. So I'll just I'll just shoulder arms to that one. Huh? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wheelhouse, wheelhouse. Stay in your sticks, line. St- which is as a, that's every other state, overseas, Hong Kong, everywhere else. So one little joint you can stay out of. And he loves loves betting. Was it just keep punning? You just bet, just keep betting. Keep knocking off DK's prices. I'm gonna. Uh, you can have you can have the big first starters, short odds, big margin trial winners to yourself. That's not in my. It's not in me. Why will else? You can come and back them all the time. You were, <laughs> you were spot on. You were spot on that last week. That no, I did. You know what it reminded me of? You know what it reminded me of? Um, I when we'd be keen. We had that pop rock, pop pop a rock go the other day. Uh, well, the, same God. thing. Thank same God. thing. Just a, a bit keen on debut. Just got knocked up late. It'll probably come out pissy next start that horse as of it. Well, I don't know why that horse was in an eleven hundred. To be honest, they as a horse, the same as Pop Rock. At least they kept it to a thousand. That's what it is. Yeah, it's fast. Yeah, yeah, just fast. Yeah, let fast horses be fast. It's dead to me that horse. It should have. It- <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> That's it. They get beat a man short odds. They go straight in the bin. No, I love not, that. It's not, it's in not, the bin. It's not the. It's not. It's not the odds necessarily. I'm happy with the bet, but I it's just not a group think, horse. I just think. Um, it was piss like the last hundred, really. I know it could have over raced a touch, but uh, I don't know. I just think you can go broke, just keep following up, following up on horses like that. So I'll wait and see. Where are we staying? Where are we staying in Fiji? As we're in the grouse, you're in the you're in the Mickey Mouse joint. The internet's all right, so it must be all right. Yeah, I'm down uh, maybe about uh, yeah three hours south of the airport. I couldn't tell you the joint, but uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. 
thanks to uh, thanks to Racing Watch King Colorado. So uh, we have to we upgrade. Oh, we've He's got, just giving me a wrap. We got another uh, look at oh, 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 gone oh, oh, uh, You've gone from poorly last week. You've shaved down. When I take the eyebrows off you at home. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Is that Uncle He's yeah. stuff? That's no, Voldemort. Like Voldemort. Lord Voldemort from Harry oh, Potter. Harry Potter. Because I, I, I shaved. <laughs> I shaved for the first time in. <laughs> Probably ten years yesterday, and I said to my missus, "She, I said, what do you think?" She says, "I like it." I said, "I look like Uncle Fester. I'm sacking it." So, <laughs> at least you won't get itchy legs now. <laughs> Come on, mate. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> Come on, DK. We got to wrap that we, up. Have we started recording yet? <laughs> mm. This is better than last week. Just go back beside the pool today, uh, Azza, and uh, we'll be cheering home uh, ruthless Dame strongly. CG Golds are calling. Enjoy, boys. See you, mate. Good luck. <laughs> there was uh, Lord Voldemort from uh, Harry Potter <laughs> previewing uh, the Tats Carnival. So he'll be, uh, he'll be back next week for the Sunshine Coast. He'll love that one. Uh, Caulfield, we've already spoken a little bit about the track. New surface, a little bit of a buyer's beware and good four, good five. Oh, sorry, soft five, soft five. We're thinking there, race five is the first race we're going to have a look at, the Lamaro's Hotel Handicap. Great feed there. Good little uh, lads to also. If uh, you've got a big group, you can get the private room out the back. Uh, Hazel Baby's a favourite here. Four dollars into three eighty. Lounge Bar Ruby five fifty. Another Ponzi seven fifty. Crown Crusher nine fifty. Redmond ten dollars. Micheletti eleven. Castilian twelve. I the Eagle thirteen. And Magnus Spin similar quote. Shack Attack one of ours uh, fifteen dollars. Also, uh, the replay we're going to have a look at here is Crown Crusher in the Lee Hope uh, blue and red. And tell us why you like this one with the white cap, Nico. I feel like, well, someone's knocked off the price. We're tipping him at 14s and now he's 950. But um, this was an okay run. This is a really solid run race uh, at Geelong there over 1,200 metres. Um, he's come home in the second fastest last 200 metres of the day. I just think it was a race where it was just too hard to get back and make ground from where he was at in the run. Um, I thought this was a good run and he's on the quick backup. This was only seven days ago. He started second pick, really charged the line there. As I said, second fastest last 20 of the day. The run prior was really good also at um, sound down. That's probably more the form tie-in for this race. They went really quick, uh, about 13 lengths above to the 600 the leader did. Um, Brun King won that race. He wasn't too far off him. He got into fourth there, crown crusher. Brun King come out and won um, at Flemington the run after. So you can definitely tie a lot of that form into this three-year-old stuff. And gee, this is a, a weak sort of race um lounge bar ruby got beat by brun king in that same in that um that flemington race which he run so you know you, you can tie a bit of the form in there and other ponzi's coming over from adelaide hazel baby had you know no metro form until last start when she ran second to um extra two prior to that she was you know getting beaten up in maidens for a few starts there dk so i just thought that this was a race where um it's a bit up for grabs, and he looks like a horse who's going pretty well. Don't know who will ride him. Um, well, that's be... the thing. You haven't got a rider. A lot of people plow into the price, and then they say, oh, who's the rider? I don't have a rider. But uh, at odds, you can do it, I suppose, Nico. But it's another question whether you want to go at $9 without a rider. I'd be happy with an apprentice he... that can claim below the minimum there. That'd be good. Or... Well, he's a... well, obviously, they wanted Blake to ride it, the stepson or whatever, or his dad's stepdad or whatever to train it. But, um, Too much weight. And he's riding Lounge Bar Ruby. But, uh, yeah, that's right. But he's a bit of a barrier. He does have some barrier manners little things there so um that'll be the concern with the getting getting the right rider for that you know yeah i thought there was just there's just enough in his form to for well, it goes right back to his debut nico i mean he's just he's just a line finder isn't he he does a bit wrong and he you know he lays in and he's still green young while he races but he i remember his debut running when he was a packing him or something and he just savaged yeah he? Hundred, nearly won hundreds yeah he? nearly won hundreds just chase him charging in the picture down the straight so he's got he's got the talent that's for sure and that this is like a class one like you said it's horses i mean i remember hazel baby was in a maiden three starts ago and um and lounge bar ruby put a few together but um a lot of them are basically, it's basically a class one race, isn't it? Mm. Three-year-old class one. Yeah, so I thought <clears throat> he'll need a few things in his favour, track pattern and all that, but um, you know, if he gets it, he's probably not a bad price at sort of double figures. Might get back out again, depending on uh, who they get to ride him. And especially his pattern too, he might uh, drift a little bit uh, just on that yeah, fact alone. Yeah, that's right. I'd say looking at all the jockeys, I'd say Al Lafferty's probably a chance. She might be our pilot, I would have thought. She's been riding a couple of winners lately. Yeah, she's going okay. Right time of the year for the claimers, isn't it? Crawford Race 9 is the next one. The Catnax Jewelers Handicap, 1,200 metres. Outback Action Favourite, 330. Prowling, 750. Omgawa, 850. Skywolf, 950. Tawana, $10. Uh, along the River, $10. Lakares is $15. And Whip 
Cracker Way is 16. Horse we're going to have a look at here is Prowling in the uh, the red and the white. Yeah, I think this might be the strongest lead-up form for this race. The the favourite outback action is coming off a dollar eighty defeat in Adelaide last up. Prowling, um, he's on the back of sort of a ton of grit here in on his insides. Vongole won a benchmark ninety to start prior. Um, he's our Bonneville, Monarch of Egypt. It's all sort of strong enough form for this race. This is over 1,400 metres. He got back and hit the line well enough. I think throughout his career, he's probably shown he's a better 1,200-metre horse. He's run prior down the straight at Flemington in the straight six. Uh, I think he ran fourth. Um, and that was a pretty good run. I think he may have come back better this campaign. The first up win was big. Yeah, then he ran third down the straight six at Flemington, got to 1,400 metres last start, too far back. I think from barrier two, Ben Malum going aboard, he can just probably just put him in the right sort of spot. Um, and in a race where, you know, there's a bit of a chinky favourite, 3.30 outback action is all these forms at Mornington, as we sort of pointed mm, out yes, we spoke a few shows that. ago, yeah. DK. Yeah. So, a, he's a dead set apples for apples horse, isn't he? Caulfield might suit him. They're, they're a bit similar, but... Um, couldn't take 3.30 him and then where do you go? Like I'm um, Gawa, Skywolf, Tijuana, didn't jump out that well. It's just a, a race with a, a bit of a raffle for your numbers and here's the horse that's got some good form lines, got B Mullum and's probably going to get the right spot on the map from two. I think they'll definitely ride him a lot closer. So I know a fair few people have found him. Uh, I don't think he'll start 7.50. I would be backing him now. I think he'll start shorter on the day. So probably a firmer and uh, hopefully a winner. This looks like a great bet. I think you've read it like a book. Yeah, this is a cracker. The straight six run, I can remember that. And uh, back to the 1200, looks absolutely perfect. What has happened to Tawana? Does anyone know? It's just, it was awful up here at the Gold Coast. He's had a few jump outs coming into this prep and he was really pushed out in his most recent. I know he's not the best trialer, but he probably would have liked to see him do it a bit easier and he didn't do it like a horse who's going to fire first up over 1200. He kind of looked like he wanted 14 off the jump out. So he always had a bit of mythical form, like around sort of Fajita Sand. He had the best run ever in the Stutt Stakes and then he just fell in. Um, he's a trier, but I, I think his level will just be Saturday class. He's He's got group class form, but it's probably not much better than sort of open Saturday class form anyway, So which Prowling has. So, um, yeah, he's, he's had a bit of a crossroads, I think, T1. Uh, Nico might give this uh, horse the uh, the launch job. Uh, if you haven't had his uh, telegram service before, when uh, Nico uh, hits the launch button, they generally run like a bloody train and just don't stop. So uh, make sure you sign up to his uh, Mounting Our Mail service on telegram, 25 bucks a week, and that's the Wednesdays and Saturday Metro. So he even makes it down to Mornington in the off-season and does the hard yards for you then. So I'm sure he'll... Uh, be have his eyes all over this horse prowling to give it uh, the rubber stamp on Saturday back at Caulfield. So <laughs> won't be as easy for Nico just to um, pop around the corner at Sandown. He's going to have to go back into the big smoke and head into Caulfield. Big uh, shout out to our sponsors, punningform.com.au. They've got uh, they've got a new little tool. They've got their little like own little um, model on sort of presets builder that they've just launched. So if you want to try um, different variables, I think it's twenty five different. Uh, settings that you can adjust and it spits out sort of a, a modelled rating and um, helps you find your top picks based on the key factors that you find relevant. So uh, if you're new to punting form, um, that little feature could be something that uh, you find uh, makes you know, helps you do your form a little bit faster. So check out punningform.com.au and uh, try some of their new features today. Walt, uh, Randwick, have you checked the weather? No, bit of rain around Friday night potentially, I think, was the last time I did check. Do you want me to check now? No, I, check, it sounds I just like, I just like asking you because you never really foot of rain shows up. I know it's goddamn cold everywhere. Randwick, let's have a look. The only race that you're going to have a look at here is Randwick Race 9, f the Furphy uh, Benchmark 78 over 1,100 metres. What a I shock. A, yeah, I own a Merck. <laughs> I own a Merck. Here it is. It's like, haven't done my homework, went and sat in the cold and watched New South Wales get beat, so I'll just tip I own a Merck. Less than one. I Less than one mil. It's been uh, 370 into hey, two. Hey, 280. Nico's taking my price again. Well, it was 290. He's when taking you the it double through. with Izzy Melbourne. He's thrown off with the old, oh, shorter <laughs> into nines, and he smashed the double with Iona Merck because he's in love with Garley. Good I, I, everyone. <laughs> in, <laughs> Insurrection 480. Narito $7. Omni Man 850. Penthouse is $12. Curtis Island 16. Ruthen is $17. Forzanini uh, $18. And Authentic Jewels, similar quote. Also, we're going to have a look at is Carly Electric Source. Iona Merck. 
Quinella with winning the Rupert 13. out of Mercedes, Amy McLucas claiming three outside leader Kabu. Here we go. So yeah, it was eleven hundred first up. I thought that was a bit of a query. Did it very easily in the worst part of the track. Then I thought it was a query. No, it was first up was eleven. Just just Sorry. stay with the program. Twelve hundred second up chasing Kabu, who I think is probably you know a potential group one horse, group two horse at worst. Um, and to run it down after sitting outside, it did have to work a little bit to get there. Had the run under its belt that Kabu didn't have, and he was back from. You know, a little bit of an injury and a problem, but I still think um, shows that this horse is certainly a much improved horse on last preparation when I sort of had a half a fat for it then. So this horse has definitely gone to another level. Uh, I hate to use the term, the draw makes it very hard to mess up, but um, uh, Amy McChicken should just park just behind <laughs> him and there's just so much speedy, Omni Man, Insurrection, Penthouse, Authentic Jewel, Smuggler's Bay, Kamonic. Uh, there's just so much speed drawn wide. The riders are, are not riders that will, you know, I doubt work out that there is a lot of speed. They just sort of go out and put the handlebars down, the ones that are on these sort of horses, most of them. So I think she just has the option to sit fourth, fifth, sixth, wherever she lands. And, um, you know, in this case, I, I like the claim as in staying in the same grade, claiming and, and getting it down to whatever it is, 57 and a half or something. This horse just airborne back to 1100 Ramwick, just every box ticked. Um, yeah, obviously 350 or whatever it was was a bit more exciting than 280. But uh, yeah, dangers wise, I, I thought the all the on speed horses were very well found, and maybe Forzanini and Lady Brooke were a bit of value, sort of 15 and 20 to one plus. But um, yeah, she should run very well. If she gives it the same ride she gave that Acapella Sun in the, she did a the good highway job or whatever it was. Yeah, she just Up sort of held the later. horse together. But it's the same sort of horse. If yeah. she just holds this horse together, this horse is a better horse, got more speed, should put itself in a in a good spot, and just sort of gets it to the outside and lets it go. That should be it. Just a don't fall off jobby. Pretty much. No, don't jam it out the gates and don't fall off it. They're the two things you just hope for. Oh, yeah, she's profitable too. Looking at uh, the punning form, she's won, uh, ridden six out of her uh, last 50 winners. But I think she's only had, she's had three rides since she rode Acapella Sun, so she doesn't get many opportunities, poor old Amy McChicken. Hmm. Yeah. hmm. She probably will over the next few weeks. She's just going through the races. It's getting harder. There's... Last day of the carnival in Brisbane, but then everyone sort of goes on holidays. Nash is already on holidays. You got Abdullah away, Bowman away. It's um, it's very tough in Sydney. I'm too scared to look at what the fields look like at the provincials on Saturday because the riders could be, you know, you got these insane twenty something horse fields on Saturday and that, that take all the jockeys to town. And I'm scared what's going to be left, but um, we'll work it out. You'll work it out racingwatch.com.au and so you can join uh, the Discord chat if uh, you want to go toe-to-toe with the other punters in there and get all the wisdom of uh, the crowd in there or you can just get his uh, Telegram service similar to Nico's Yard. You just uh, get the bets as they sort of come through. So mad not to check uh, that one out if you want to follow uh, the New South Wales racing a little bit closer. Uh, I think it's time for Donnie's best, Tuta Levita last week. He's got the money. He's in form. He's up and about. Hey, guys. Donnie here with this weekend's best bet. Comes up in race five, number 11, Osmos. So two pretty bad rides this start from Timmy Clark. It's been held up in traffic. The wide barrier suits. I think it will roll to the front and be tremendously hard to beat. Around $4.60 with top sport. Looks like it's going to be an outstanding bet and try and get as much on responsibly as you can. Anyway, um... I'm here with the man right now. What do you think? I will take him on. We'll, we'll, we'll take him on. But he's very confident. Very confident. <laughs> Good luck tonight at Origin and uh, go Osmos. Well, someone's not the price off here. It's been 480 into 420. Good luck tonight. Osmos. Jeez, that worked out well, didn't it? Good What's luck that? tonight. Oh, yeah. Luck tonight. Gave it away. He was dark and he's in the, in the van there on the way to the game. Yeah, but that was it. That was probably the catalyst. Huh? He's probably broken Tommy Turbo's arm saying that. He, he'd do better than Fitler coaching, I would have thought. That's what I said. I sent, what I sent him a message halfway through that t- the Titans have got a better attack. So, you know, only for about 30 minutes. Um, Osmos, I was desperate for it to lob in the 2100 metre race, but um, do agree with him that the, the wide draw certainly suits this horse. Just don't think it's a, the normal Gay Waterhouse shake and bake 14 but maybe, you know, fourth up over a mile, that's probably their only option and, and it might just keep running. Certainly has been very unlucky, like he said, but I just wish it had a lobbed in the other race where it did look an absolute gimme for it, the 2100, but we cheering hard for the Donster. Not much in the race, is there? Ocean Treaty, much of the same. It's, it's, it's hard, yeah, it's a disgusting race. Yeah, and, and like you said, $5 is certainly fair enough for a, a horse that's been unlucky left field, def- definitely much better suited from a wide than an inside draw. Just wish it was up in distance. Now it's time for the, uh, the top sport steams. Just saw Tristan. I think they did okay. I think uh, the plus was heavily backed. 
Couldn't believe Nick Tedeschi found the plus last night, but what, what would I know about NRL? The plus for? New South Wales. Well, six and a half in a Oh, five yeah, and yeah, half. yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Oh, well. Yeah, back the other way. It's a low game. 13 plus. Well, it was a great game. Yeah, but it was a low ga- low, low the, the, the skill level on show. It was from just, one just side? A, just a, from both sides. They did nothing. They scored four tries back to God with the old mate Damien Cook getting knocked out by his own players. It was awesome. It was uh, – you got a five foot eight winger defending bombs. That's a sorry, a, a hooker defending bombs <laughs> on the wing. Uh, you, you go, Freddie. Right. You got three weeks to get over it. I just want the games to be better. They're just like you, you feel like Origin night. You go back and watch the nineteen ninety nine ones or whatever. I don't care who wins. They're just better contests. So that's why you got to watch it, DK. This is exciting. It's uh, revs them all up. How can you watch it? Uh, watch AFL like uh, like it's just exactly. Doesn't... I agree with you. How can you watch yeah. AFL? No, no. How can you watch? Right, go back. Regress to watching. Rugby league after watching AFL. I don't know. Anyway, he's turning on. Well, I have watched. I have watched one rugby league. Oh, sorry, I watched half a rugby league game with Walt, and um, it's half an hour. Or half a half an hour. I'd never get back in my life. You should have enjoyed it. I've <laughs> never been in more pain. It was about forty nil <laughs> Melbourne That's after right, twenty minutes. Too, yes, just disappeared to somewhere. DK, man, <laughs> a mystery. <laughs> Top sports steamers. Randwick race six number four here is uh, Queen Maker eight hundred at three seventy. 17th run for the prep, um, flying. Uh, got run down by a decent horse the other day and I haven't had a good look at the race. But it seems very short, but um, Into two Queen seven. Maker to be that price on a Saturday is very scary, but it must be a suitable race for it oh, to be that short. Pharaoh's over. Rain, Darlington Country, Sophia's Magic, yeah, Venetia so it's Blue. A, it's a provincial race that's racing on a Saturday. Up you go. Um, but too short for me. Mm, yeah. Looks a bit lacklustre, that one. And the next one is uh, race eight, number 12, and it's uh, Why Ha Ha Falls 400 at $6 in the Civic Stakes. Uh, Cathel, King of Hastings, Cisco yeah. Bay, Long Villas, Hosier. Not much between a lot of these horses. This is a take turns race. Um, ah, cadeau has been hammered, 21 into 12. Yeah, the King of Hastings was unlucky last start. It's Cisco Bay's flying with inside draw, Cattell. There's just, no. This explains... Uh, no the Caulfield uh, price collapsing here, Nico. Race five, number 11, Crown Crusader. Someone's at a filthy little $150 him. at 14. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> so I looked strong. at the price and it was $9.50. You know the scary part is? Cut back to win 2000 But that's that's enough. Bang. That's Mark enough to set destroyed. it off. Destroyed. That's enough to set it off. If, if the wrong trade is in there and he bets 300 of it back to someone else and it gets passed down the line, that's enough to set it off. Scary, isn't it? Hmm. Price gone. Ruined it for everyone. Uh, Eagle Farm, race one, number two. Uh, et two Brute, uh, 200 at $11. That's the um, – This is a little five-horse uh, field race. Yeah, so this horse – I know the horse quite well, actually. The Freeman horse, but how far is the race? A mile? 1,400. It needs at least that. Yeah, it's probably the only worry for it. probably needs a mile 2,000 to get to its best, but it's um, it's a nice enough horse. Mm, so it's at the Tis Time run in, at Pakenham, the Miracle of Love. Uh, maiden and it comes here now. It's twelve into seven dollars. Yeah, so it was the one. It ran third to Miracle of Love, and um, who was the one that the thing ran second? I think the least horse that we were on that day. The Miracle mm. Love's obviously come out and second in the TJ. So um, yeah, not definitely not knocking that at eleven dollars. Right to parties, a favourite there. No, stable mate. Yeah, yeah, interesting, hmm. interesting. But I, I think the stable mate will beat it home to be honest. But um, yeah, eleven dollars is fair enough. And Sukaret. Hmm. Yeah, it was stiff the other day. It's a, it's a good little race for a five-horse field, isn't it, a six-horse field? Beauty. All right. I think uh, I think that's the show. Any final thoughts or uh, have you got a winner for us, DK? I know you're happy to put it on Azza, but anything for us? Oh, what? Um, didn't I tip something off the noms at Swan Hill the other day? Did I? What was it? You're telling me I shelved something at Henry's, so they paid 200000 for it. Do you remember talking about that? Well, yeah, we did, it, about did that. it run? Oh, it didn't run. No, it didn't run there. It it ran, so what's it, what's it the ran last, story? It, it ran last Sunday, the Sunday after. What price? Eight dollars to three dollars. One, pissed in. <laughs> Electric impulse. So hopefully someone, one listener, back to the list. Let's do it. I got one meeting. There's only one meeting. It was Ballarat Polly. So I've got one today. It's it's knock on a Tuesday and it wins at Royal Ascot on the Saturday. I can still claim it. <laughs> what time's the show go to where? Two thirty or something. So. Yeah, three o'clock. Oh, well, if you at two thirty and then get to this, this is an hour into the show. So then, if you get it right at two thirty and you've listened to the show by three thirty. And you come up to this section today, if you're lucky enough to do that, one or two people, <laughs> there's a race, the last today, Whiskey Hangover will win that at sale. So <clears throat> I, was at, I was at Lamar. If only it is throwing about Lamaros, segue, scoot. 
I was at yeah. Lamaro's for lunch, I don't know, when, uh, this time last year, whenever it was. <clears throat> David Price was having his 60th next door. So he had the whole front bar area booked out for his 60th. David Price, Price Bloodstock, all the Butch Bulldogs colours who owns this whiskey hangover. The Hayes horse set that horse to win on his birthday. They're all around the TV. He's watching it at, at sale. And guess what happened? It got beaten, of course, on his birthday. Typical racing. The racing gods got beaten that far. It went to the paddock but stuck in my head. And, uh, geez, it was a big win the other day. I don't remember when I won it. I, I drew the 13 or 13 at a Chuka. I thought, oh, where's this going to up in the run? It said four wide, the trip and still won. Yeah. Didn't matter. Still bolted in, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. So it, it goes right. back to sale today where they set it for the for his birthday to win. Um, so anyway, it's at four o'clock or 4.30 today, Thursday. Nothing at synthetic tomorrow. And there's no fields out for me for the weekend yet. So well, there you go, pressure. Scoot. There's another five minutes of the show. Dribble. <laughs> it's a uh, little bit of pressure on Borco now to get that uh, get that show out, and get, I'm going to have to email it out at, at four o'clock because I tell you what, <laughs> the email just goes berserk, and then you get all these people that can't you just on. send the early tip with the old, you know, when you send out well, the thing about an hour early to say it's coming? Can't you just throw the DK moral in with that? Tweet? Could do that. Yeah. Oh, I could, I could do that. Yeah, probably. I'll put it. I could I'd, put I'd it hate to be the thinker chat. amongst us, but you know, it might be an idea. <laughs> <laughs> it might be too hard, that. I never <laughs> really thought of that. <laughs> yeah, well, you give it, no, no one will listen then. <laughs> yeah, well, DK usually tips something on Friday. He gives everyone something to look at. No, he usually look, tips something there. three weeks it's... earlier in a race that it wasn't in, then okay. claims it three weeks later in a race that it did run in. Uh, the two, the, there's $2.80 chances in the races of Capolet and Buminati. So they both got beaten at evens last start. So not the sort of horses I'm going to find. Um, mm. that, that's the races on Friday at Ballarat. And then there's no, I've got no, no, no the rest no. I tip one off the noms. It doesn't get a run. You don't ask me about it last week. Scoot, I'm sitting here wa waiting for you to say if you like anything, DK. No, no. That went through to the keeper last week. You usually find it difficult to speak up, DK. <laughs> I don't know how the I don't know why you were waiting for a, a cue. Personal invitation uh, from the Queen to fucking have a chat. <laughs> that gets us what's why I got on the show to talk. Didn't didn't get asked today about it, but he seemed to mention it. Yeah. Uh, he must have just kept it up his sleeve. Eight dollars they bet. It was like the old free bet, the wow. free bet tip. That was Eight awesome. to three dollars. Could have oh, used yeah. that too. Okay. That's my that was good my kid Colorado, it. God bless it. Not <laughs> as big a rod, but uh, good result. Well done. I'm sure someone oh, out there's found it for sure. Yeah. Off that. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Uh, there you go. And it'll win again. <laughs> Just be on it next start. Be on it. Bet your Electric goes, impulse. Bet your, bet your goes so it's straight to Saturday. It will go through its grades and just end up in Saturday grade very soon. It only did what it did the other day. Three back the rail, squirted up the last 300. Wait till it gets swooping down the middle and rounds them up. Ooh, whoosh go. That, was that horse a cause for concern? Yeah, that, oh, that horse. Matt, Matty Gillen messages me and I'm like in outer space because they got a, they pushed it to Sky 2 and I've been waiting <laughs> for that horse. Blink is on. That thing I didn't know it was in at all. And he sends me a message. Oh, I'm having something on our horse in the last. So I thought it meant his horse, right? He meant our horse, as in the horse we've been following and backing, oh, yeah. and I'm just and I'm watching it chime in down the middle. I'm like, oh. then remember what horse it was. That was a that was a good moment. Good old Sky Two pushed at Flemington. Yeah, oh. how about that? Oh, Nothing yeah. worse. It's a nice horse, of course, for concern. Hey, yeah, Sandy. All right. Good luck on the weekend, gents. I'll wrap the show up so we can get it out before uh, four thirty, and I might just. That's why uh, I'm trying push, to hold it off. Push that I'm just pushing tip it early. <laughs> well, uh, see you next week.